BGP yeah. is there for a reason. It's right. there because you dynamically want to route around problems. But if you get give it the wrong information, then traffic is going to go to odd places. I mean, it, it seems to me that, that if you trust somebody to route your traffic, you end up trusting somebody to route your traffic. And if, yeah. if there was somebody you shouldn't have trusted to route your traffic, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm just, is there like a fix at the BGP level? I mean, this has been going on for a long time. It sort of seems like this is the way it yeah. works. This is sort of the best we got. Or are there ideas moving forward at this point? There, there are some things going on, and they have to do with stuff like signing the, or, the origin of a route or signing the intermediate steps in a route. Mm -hmm. There are issues with it because signing takes time. And as I was told once by a programmer at a major router vendor, I can route them or I can count them. Which do you want me to do? Well, I can route them or I can check the routes. Which do you yeah. want me to do? If you're going to take time to sign things and to check the signatures, you're not, you're not doing the routing. Would it be something where you could just like check signatures on the advertisements of new routes? Or is this really something that you would have to check for each packet as it went? No, you would, you would check it on the route advertisements, but the problem is, if you look at a router, they have very high speed processing on the, on the line cards, which are actually taking the packets and routing them. But the route processors are comparatively wimpy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now you're talking about additional functions for the route processor to do. And so you're hitting the router where it has the least amount of capacity right. in, in the route processing rather than in the line card. Yeah, uh, and if it, it, I mean <coughs> to change it over time is a reasonable thing to do. Yeah. But to change it and then expect the existing infrastructure to take right. up that load, it's well, not as if you can just go run around and replace all the yeah. routers and everybody's plus, happy. Plus, plus if you're going to do signatures, you have to build the whole infrastructure of signatures and how do I check the signatures and what mm -hmm. do I use for certificates to make sure it's being signed by the right uh, by the right entity and so forth, and that infrastructure has to be built up, and then you have to worry about that infrastructure. <laughs> because there have been cases in the past yeah. of uh, the, the DigiNotar case comes to mind mm -hmm. where uh, you know, certificate authorities were compromised. And so it's not, you know, you still have to make sure that your signatures can be trusted right. and make sure that that's, that whole thing is not broken. Okay. And this is not as if we're looking at a situation where, you know, some kid decides to inject a new route into the network. This yeah. is a case where if somebody's going to do something malicious, it's a relatively sophisticated actor yeah. group and they're going to be relatively highly motivated, they're taking a reasonable risk in doing that because it's going to end up eventually being globally visible. So yeah, yeah it's, going to, it's going to be caught, right? I mean, yeah. if someone advertises a, a, a bad route, eventually someone's going to say, hey, that's my route. That shouldn't have been advertised. It's, At least that's what we think. It's usually caught, <laughs> although that, that thing where the traffic detour, detoured yeah. through Iceland or Belarus, since it eventually got where it was supposed to go, that's a much harder thing to find than traffic yes. disappearing into a black hole because somebody advertised a route that they didn't really have, and you sent them the traffic and they didn't know what to do with it when they got right. it. Yeah. Anybody along that route is technically a suspect if the point was yeah. to sniff the traffic. Yeah. 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 Well, and even people who aren't in that route are, are technically, because you could compromise a router in another country. Like I said, I mean, you don't know whether it was Iceland or Belarus that actually did this. You just know that's where the traffic was detouring through. Right. But somebody in, uh, you know, Zimbabwe could have hijacked a router right. in, in Belarus and have it advertise a router uh, and have it av advertise oh, right. a route. And it would have nothing to do with Belarus. They just look bad because that's where all the traffic right. is being diverted. Well, and I think that uh, kind of points to that on the internet, you're really dependent on the security of the yeah. infrastructure throughout the internet, not yeah. just well, security and ISP. proper operation. Right, for proper yeah. operation. Yeah. So I think it's, it's so go ahead, Matt. Well, I did want to say that it's, you guys were saying that this sounds like it might be a better well-resourced or you know, very much like nation state style attack. I'm not so sure that's the case because if somebody can do this pretty simply, mm -hmm. compromising one or maybe a handful of of ill-protected routers on the internet, uh, what prevents somebody of lesser skill from doing it? Uh, it's not. What I, was, what, what, I, what I probably should have said is that some of these things, like signing the routes, they will help you get rid of the fat finger or the, the, the unskilled attackers. Right. But the nation states can probably get around it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that.